to, to really frankly speak about that, but uh, we're just talking about, you know, going through the path, yes, in, in one point, you know, in my search and stuff for about a year, I had this thing coming and it was dark and it was very dark, very evil, very, you know, and I was in the middle of the floor in a ball just like this. Oh my God, I'm surprised my hair didn't turn white overnight. I was just terrorized and it was, you know, and, and this is what it takes to become a teacher. You know, you have to experience all these things and then find the way through by yourself. There's nobody to save you at that point. You know, I'm praying to God, I'm praying to Christ, I'm praying to, you know, I'm trying to fight it, I'm doing everything I can, and it just kept coming and coming. And it took, finally, just sitting, sitting, and let it do, let do your worst and not moving and not feeding it. Not feeding it in fear, not feeding it in, you know, nothing. Basically, you cut off all the energy source, and it has nothing to feed on at that point. You can't love it away. You can't fight it away. You can't, you know, yeah, yeah well, you, and you're praying, and you're trying to cling to something, but you have to find out that that is, that God energy is within, you know, and then you, at that point, you have to totally rest in God and, and quit you know, begging and crying or, or praying or, or, you know, trying to, to, you know, fight it and wrestle it, whatever, you know, you have to finally just sit and, you know, give it no energy whatsoever. And at that point, it has nothing to feed on, to generate, and then it's gone. It's, it's finished, done, done. Yeah, but I think um, not everybody's in that. And I don't usually put out these kind of videos because it can, you know, people can get in fear. But it is something that can happen when you're walking in this type of a path and you're doing this type of internal because, like I said, all your fears, all of your stuff is going to come up and manifest in one way, shape, or form for you to see. It's going to challenge every belief system you've ever had about Christ, about church, about Buddhism, about I, I don't care what it is, it's going to challenge you on every single level. And you're the one that has to face it and has to go through it. But yeah, at that point, you know, when you feel like you're going to spontaneously combust because the energy is just so rampant, or that you've got this, you know, this thing that's coming and you can feel that it's dark and you can feel and you're in terror <laughs> I mean literally terror sitting there you know and again you know at that point you have to just sit through and not feed it you don't fight it you don't love it you don't, you know, oh, take this away, take this away, you know, it, it depend, you have to finally just sit, you know, and for lack of a better term, throw yourself in the mercy of God and let him handle it and let go, let go of it totally. So that's the whole path there in a nutshell anyway. That's the whole thing. And, and I, you know, again, it, it sets you up for the ultimate surrender in the end where you have to surrender up even your life you have to surrender you're coming to that point of you know it's like the 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 path of christ is like an allegory as well on on what it takes to walk a path you have the tempting you have the wilderness you have the scourging you have the you know where you have to climb up and you have to physically be willing to lay down your life to be crucified within yourself that's the path. No bullshit. That's really it. Whether you're doing it in a monastery, whether you're Christian and you're a nun there, or whether you are doing it on this type of path, it's the same type of journey in the end. It doesn't matter the outer trappings, religiosity of it. 
it still comes out to the same thing. You know, when we don't speak a lot because it's, uh, these are the more the inner depth and the inner workings of what one faces, you know, on a, a real hardcore <laughs> journey within. Oh, it's relentless stuff. It's relentless. It exactly once that once that one is really you know i'm not talking about playing on the surface people i'm talking about you know at a young age or whatever you've dedicated yourself you know like i said and i i was didn't know what i was asking for when i was young i asked to walk the path of christ when i was young sincerely flat out on the floor you know, uh, the church asking to walk that path, and boy, did I get it in spades. And you don't know what you're asking for. But like the Bible says, you have to go through that burning process, and it burns, it takes the gold and refines it through the fires, burns away the dross, and I mean, you have to face the fires. It's not a joke. We're not talking about Happy Sunday going to church and you hear a nice little sermon and you go home and you live your life. No, it's 24/7. This is 24 seven. We're talking about, you know, like what, what the, what the saints have faced. I mean, the, the full on hardcore journey, you know, ones like Father Pio and, and things like that. They had Kundalini awakenings, you know, some of these saints and stuff you can tell from their lives and the experiences they had um, you know um, some of the catholic saints that that they did have kundalini awakenings the only explanation for a lot of the things that they experienced um the the great depth and yes you can have that dark night of the soul you know one has to traverse that if one is making that really really deep deep in-depth journey one has you know all of these things that come up that you know that one um faces you know yes no joke you know i have I've talked some about some of the suffering that one goes through you know at one point you know you feel the weight of the world you know at one point you feel like you're dead like a zombie you feel nothing and then it's even worse than the torture one was going through before and you know you're, you're just like well when's the resurrection coming you know because it, one goes through those things and I mean it's not a joke it's not a oh an insight I've had about it you know I've read it and what an insight no I mean these are living living experiences to the depth of your soul and the depth of your being I mean no joke no joke when I had that time where you feel the suffering of humanity, my God, you could, it's like you're crucified. You can't, you can't take a breath. You can't breathe. You can't, you're in so much that suffering of that humanity that is the heaviness. You can't even describe what that heaviness is like to feel that. It's torture to feel the suffering of humanity. You know, this is not an idea, an ideology, or a, a belief system, something like that. These are really in-your-face, point-blank experiences that one goes through. So when I wrote the book, from Kundalini from Hell to Heaven, I mean, you do go through hell. <laughs> really, it's not a joke. One does go through that hell and that, that tortured... Um, part of it, you know, to burn away the dross, to see what one's made of. No way around it. I mean, one goes through the, the point of miracles. Miracles happen around you, you know, and, uh, you know, feeling what's going on inside of another person, be able to touch them and they're healed. I mean, one goes through those kind of things as well. Miracles. Uh, you know, miraculous things that happen. Um, one goes through that point of it as well. Um, so there's the very uh, tortured, difficult part, and then there's the miracles and the, you know, other parts. And 
course, people want to hear about the miraculous. They don't want to hear about <laughs> the other part that goes with it, you know. But uh, again, that's part of the journey. Don't talk about it a lot because not everyone is going to go through that, you know, unless they are really, um, really dedicated to getting off the wheel of karma and and a uh, hundred percent surrendered to that spiritual life yeah i mean like i said and this is why the path has changed here so radically because 99.9 .9 of the people they want to hear the church sermon they want to hear the nice fluffy stuff they want the church sermon and they want a few little tidbits and ideas and helpful hints on how to make their life better. More the superficial the, thing. The more of the superficial thing. I want to have my life, but I want it to be better. They're not really into that, you know, very heavy, in-depth, soul-searching and dedication to God and wanting, in my case, it was wanting to know God. What, what is God? Is God and what is God? Wanting to know what is truth, what is that truth, and wanting it with every fiber of my being, no matter what the personal cost is to, to do that. And walking that path, you know, and being willing to put oneself on the line and uh, surrender into that. So, you know, again, um, there are some people that, that have that call, that desire, that, uh, you know, and they will go the whole of the way, but 99.9% .9 of the humanity, no. <laughs> look at how many people are Catholics and look at how many saints there are. Okay. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> okay. Very few. <laughs> Very few. Yeah, you can almost name them on, on one hand. Those that are truly, that are truly dedicated and truly went through the fires and, and really went through that that the fires of it yeah and and it takes that it takes a, a lot of years to to go through those fires whether one is in a nunnery and on your knees and you're flat out you know in in uh, contemplated prayer every day or you're doing it out here and you're surrendered into that you know you, you do it where where you're at one doesn't have to do it in a monastery. One doesn't have to. One can still be fully, totally dedicated to doing it where, where they're at. And, uh, you know, and, and there are things that aid in every part of the journey, but eventually the journey completes, and then one goes back into life. Mystery solved. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't think anybody ever really wants to know what fully is involved before you begin because it would scare the bejeebers out of you, you know, you would never make the journey if you knew really what all it entails. Um, but would you ever change it at the end to go back into that illusion and delusion? No. Of course not. Of course not. Um, even though the ultimate goal is you eventually you come back into life. <laughs> Seemingly where you were before you started, but it's on a whole different level at that point in time. It's a whole, whole different thing, although on the surface it seems to be, you know, sort of where you started. But. Uh -huh.
Full circle. Yeah. One goes full circle. Yeah, Back to chopping wood and carrying water again, you know, but uh, without the suffering, without the uh, delusion, without the illusion, without the questioning, without the drama. <clears throat> Is God, is God not, what, what is it, etc. You know, absolutely 100% beyond the shadow of a doubt what is there and why the laws of the universe are the way they are. And so one rests in that, secure in, in that knowledge. And uh, yeah, know that in the end, truth has to prevail because it is the center point of all being. So it doesn't matter how far the darkness wants to pull the seeds away from that ultimate light and distort and twist and turn. It's a shadow. It has no substance compared to that light. Okay. <laughs> That's it, the walk in a nutshell. So again, what's Swami? Swami means one that has the Lord over themselves. They've made the journey. <laughs> That's what Swami means, one that not lording it over others, but has, you know, come to that point, you know, that they have made the journey. That's it. Okay. <laughs> yes, it's such a big title. <laughs> it's a word. Get over it. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> so I think this is about ready to close this out. Okay. The inner workings of the mystic. It's really for those that are really on the mystic's path, you know. Another level too. That's a whole other level. The workings of the mystic's path. This is, you know, what this is. The, the path of the mystic, the genuine mystic not those that have read, you know, a, a few books and they're enamored of it, you know, on the surface and they want to have all the outer trappings, you know. In the end, it doesn't matter what the outer trappings are, whether you wear them or whether you don't. It's another mind game. It's another play, another game. I see a lot of them that are in the ochre robes and this and that, and it's another game. They're playing another role in another game with themselves in the end. You can have realization. There are King Janak that have realization. He didn't give up his kingship and live under a tree. He remained a king. Doesn't matter where you're at. In the end, if you read the Ashtavakra Gita, if you read the Vivek Chudamani, in the end it doesn't matter where you are, and you can't judge a book by its cover. But people like the fancy covers of the books. It's got to have the right cover, or else I'm not going to look at the content. <laughs> and there are a lot of books that have a nice cover, but they're empty of content in the end. Or it's a nice little fantasy story. But your choice. <laughs> so again, this was a little bit about the path of the mystic. What's involved, what it takes. It's not all fun and games, I guarantee you that. Uh, it's the longest journey and you wind up going sort of nowhere in the end <laughs> but it's the longest journey to nowhere you'll ever make <laughs> the universe has such a sense of humor you know when it all falls away and deconstructs you're just like oh my god you know 
go here and there for all this wisdom and you know of course it's always right where you've been but without making the journey you would never have found it so it's it's again it's humorous in its own right <laughs> so namaste for the genuine mystics out there <laughs> Enjoy the journey. Don't give up. Um, continue to surrender, surrender, surrender <laughs> to what comes along the way. And for those, the 99.9%, .9 enjoy the church sermons. Get what you can out of it. Enjoy your lives. You know, no reason not to, you know. Um, but just be honest in which path you're on and what direction you want to go. It's one of the first three pointings, honesty, integrity, transparency. You know, know where you want to go. If you're not walking the path of the mystic and you're not ready for the hardship, you're not ready to make the sacrifices that it takes along the way to do that journey, be honest in that. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with the path of duality. Nothing wrong with, with love and your family and all of these things. Nothing wrong with it. But just be secure that that's where you want to be. That's all. And if you're really in the path of the mystic, then be honest with what it takes to, to do that path. And one is either willing to make the sacrifices required and do what's needed, you know, for the joy of tramping through the thorns. <laughs> and one's willing to make that journey. And if you're willing to make that journey, then make it honestly. That's all. <laughs> Hi, guys.